What's up everybody, Bryson Michael RC here, and I just want to get a quick tip video out for you all tonight. Uh, this is for your LiPo batteries, and it's mainly for storage, not, not necessarily for if you're going to charge and fly, but basically for storage on how you can uh, protect your LiPo battery and keep the life of your battery longer lasting. Of course, these $100 batteries here for the Phantom 3, the ones for the Phantom 4, the Inspire, the Inspire 2. Those types of LiPo batteries, you do not want them to lose life in a short period of time because you're spending some pretty, a pretty good amount of money for them. So that's, that's the main importance of this video. But since all LiPo batteries are pretty much molecularly the, the same, these same rules apply to not only uh, the big batteries, but also the smaller batteries as well. I got two hobby toy grade drone batteries down here below and the same rules and the same tips apply for both of these and I think people store the hobby and toy drones a lot more than they store the phantom drones because when you have a phantom uh, you tend to fly it a lot. Some people are pro professional photographers and they only take it out when they're flying to uh, get some professional photography done. And so those, those types of people who have a schedule and maybe they have one shoot and then like a week have another shoot. Uh, this is this is more for you guys when it comes to like the smart batteries. But here's some helpful tips on um, keeping the life of your battery uh, up. And those of you that aren't storing your batteries uh, for long periods of time, like over 24 hours or you know over two days and stuff, it's a it's a good habit to get into just in case you put your drone up and you don't get it out for a couple days. Just in case, it's a good habit to to have. Now, in transparency, I just want to tell you guys that each one of these batteries is well over a year old. And each one of these batteries is still performing at the same level as it was when I first bought it. And that's because I follow uh, certain rules, I guess, and certain guidelines uh, when charging batteries and when storing batteries and when and just the overall handling and, and everything of my batteries. The main thing that we're going to talk about basically when it comes to these LiPo batteries is charging. Now when you're charging your battery for the sole purpose of as soon as your battery is charged, you're going to put it in your drone, you're going to take off and fly, It's a, you can go ahead and charge this all the way up completely full, uh, slap it in your drone, and then fly it off. But if you're charging these, like say you have five or six of these batteries, or ten of these batteries because you want to fly a hobby drone more than six minutes, or you know several of these batteries, and you're going to be storing these batteries uh, for a while to maybe go out say the weather's bad and, and it stays bad for a few days, maybe you don't know how long it's going to stay bad for, but you want to make sure that your batteries are charged and as soon as the weather goes away, uh, you can get out and, and fly. You don't want to charge these all the way. That's one of the main things uh, that people get wrong when it comes to these quadcopter batteries and these LiPo batteries, is charging fully. A lot of people, they, they charge them, they fill them up, fill up several batteries, they put them in a backpack or something like that, and they leave them in there. Maybe they just use one battery, uh, set it aside, and then whenever they get home, they recharge the battery that they use and they put it in, uh, ultimately making it to where two or three other batteries never get used, but they're still sitting in the backpack holding that full charge. That's one thing that you don't want to do. Now, I'm not going to get into the technical jargon of it, but it's really bad for these to keep them at a full charge and, and storm for a long period of time. So what I suggest to you guys is to get into the habit of storing these at three quarters of the way. Now these smart batteries are fairly simple to do that, and you can see my battery is already at three quarters. And I make sure, just as a helpful habit to have, whenever I charge my batteries, because I, I mean I fly every single day, and so I could probably charge them fully and they would still be just as good. But the fact that something can come up at any one day or any one week, you know, and, and I could leave these, but I don't want to ruin a $100 battery. Uh, so no matter what, whenever I get done flying and when the battery pulls off, and we'll talk about that later, uh, I charge it only three quarters of the way and then I store it. And then whenever I fly the next day, I make sure and I, I set aside a certain amount of time for flight. That way I can add in the extra time for the battery charge to get it up to the full 100% before I fly it. It's really easy to, to make sure that these are only three quarter full you may think that it's not because it doesn't have the, the light indicators that the smart battery does on the top. But I suggest that everybody, whenever you have a hobby grade or a toy grade drone that has one of these batteries that comes with like a USB port plug-in and has a light on it to indicate when the, the, when the battery is charged, is just make sure that when you first take your battery 
For one, you want to number your batteries. That way, for one, when you're rotating through your batteries, you can make a rotating system to make sure that you're using all of your batteries uh, and you're not letting any one of them set for a long period of time. Uh, but when plugging these things in, the first time that you plug it in, you need to mark down the time, the time of which you plugged it in and the time that you, the light turned green indicating that it was completely fully charged. For one, you know how long it takes for it to fully charge and you can cut that time down by a quarter and then that's your three quarters full. But also another advantage to timing your, your very first charge is it's a brand new battery and so it's going to hold the most charge. And you can actually see some batteries deteriorate through time and don't hold as much of a charge, which brings their performance level down. And it, it, it also kind of indicates when the battery is just going bad. Take your full time charge, take a quarter of it off and, and charge it for only three quarters of the way. Uh, and then when you're about ready to go out and fly, make sure that you set enough time aside that you can put the full charge in before flying your drone. So that's one of the main tips right there on keeping the longevity of your LiPo battery is just making sure that when you store it for long periods of time that you don't store it with a full charge. That's one of the biggest mistakes that beginner drone owners have. They're very good batteries, but they're very sensitive and delicate when it comes to certain things. Also, when flying your drone, make sure that when you're flying it, you don't use only half a charge or three quarters of a charge. Make sure that you empty this battery as much as you can. A lot of people suggest that you get it down to 3% before taking the battery out, cooling it down, and recharging it. Again, I'm not going to get into the technicalities of it. You can look it up. And these Phantoms have the smart technology not only on the top, but in the app you can see the exact percentage that your battery is at. So you can make sure that you run your battery all the way down. It's better on the battery to run the battery out than to keep a certain amount in it and just keep recharging it on top of that. Eventually it'll just wear the charge out on your battery and it won't hold as much. But these smaller ones, it's really not hard to get it down to, to 1 or 2%. Because basically your, your drone shuts off at about, oh, 5%. And you can leave the drone on with the lights on flashing for just a little bit longer and just drain a little bit more of the battery out. You only get about 6 to 7, maybe sometimes 8 and 12 minutes of flight time when it comes to these LiPo batteries themselves. And so it's not hard to use the whole battery. These smart batteries have about 20 minutes on it, so sometimes you don't want to fly for 20 minutes. And so finding the time to make sure that the battery is completely drained, and I, and, and I say this for most of the time, not necessarily all of the time, because there's been several times that I've only had a 10 minute flight, and I really just didn't have the time to, to put it in. But I made sure that I didn't recharge that battery. The next time that I went out and flew my drone, I worked the rest of that battery off, and then I plugged it back in after it cooled down. These ones, you're not going to have any problem with that. You're going to you're going to fly the quadcopter until the quadcopter stops, because six minutes of flight time really isn't all that much. Your tip number three on the longevity of your LiPo batteries is make sure that you never charge these things when they're hot. Now these batteries themselves, I think, drain a little bit slower than these batteries. You've got to understand that the capacity of these smart uh, 20 minute Phantom LiPo batteries is they hold a ton of charge in them. A 20 minute flight time is actually draining it fairly quickly. Not as quick as these are drained, but it's still fairly quickly. Quick enough that this battery gets fairly hot. Now make sure that you don't take this straight out of the Phantom and plug it straight into the plug-in. It should say in your manual, and you should be reading your manuals when it comes to the batteries and the safe keepings of your batteries and things. But just in case you haven't read the manual, just make sure that that is a huge thing when it comes to uh, these batteries blowing up. Uh, getting fat, uh, you know, blowing out, or even catching fire and smoking and, and all sorts of things. Uh, when you plug it in with it hot, again, I'm not going to get into the technicalities of it. Uh, I will make another video if you guys want me to. Just leave a comment and I'll get into the technicalities of the LiPo battery. But right now it's just the tips that I'm giving you. These ones right here get super hot. Because you got to imagine that these things are fully charged and then within six minutes they're down to almost nothing. So when you take these batteries out, oftentimes they're super hot. Not only are they hot, but right now that it's hard, but sometimes whenever you get these big blue ones out like this, you can feel just a little bit of squish to them. These ones right here get super toasty. I've never had one that I couldn't touch because it was so hot, but I've heard of some of them getting that hot. If a battery's getting that hot, 
then that battery is more than likely dead. It, you don't want to use it again because it's unsafe and you might as well just throw it away. You should still always be able to hold your battery. Let it cool down. Wait 10 to 15 minutes uh, to safeguard and make sure that you spare the life of your LiPo battery. And then my final tip for everybody on, on your LiPo batteries, and again, I must say that this is mainly for people who are storing their batteries for a, a period of time. It's, these are also really good habits to get into, even if you're not, just in case you end up storing them at one point. The last tip is making sure that you stay away from extreme temperatures. LiPo batteries are very sensitive when it comes to extreme temperatures in both directions. If it's extremely cold, your LiPo battery doesn't perform at the same peak that it does whenever it's a decent degree outside. I mean, when it's hot, when it's warm, uh, it just doesn't perform the same. In fact, most of the time, whenever you're flying in cold weather or snow or anything like that, and I made a previous video to this, uh, you can look at my channel, hit that subscribe button, uh, go back and check out one of my videos uh, on flying in cold weather. Oftentimes these things have 20 minutes of flight time regularly, but in cold weather you'll be lucky to get about 12 to 15 minutes tops with peak performance. And plus you all, you want to go through and warm up your battery, and you want to go through and warm up your drone, and do all the things in that video. Also the same with these, whenever you're flying in cold weather you want to make sure that you uh, do something, keep them in your hands, keep them in your pop pockets with your hands grasped around them to keep them warm. Uh, and then put them in your drone, you're going to get the most performance out of them. Uh, when these things start, if you if you don't warm these up in cold weather, they they tend to start losing voltage. And when they start slipping voltage, uh, it starts messing with the insides of the LiPo battery. And you can actually ruin your LiPo battery that way as well. Also, one of the main things that you need to stay away from is the extreme heat. Really, really, really hot. Now, I'm talking about above 100 degrees. Don't put these in a in an oven. Keep it stored in air conditioning. Don't the, the main thing, like I said, this video is mainly about storage. So make sure that you don't take these batteries, put them in your drone backpack, and then put it up in the attic or put it out in your garage or something like that that doesn't have air conditioning during the summertime when it gets to be about 100 and some degrees outside. Because in the attic itself, when it's about 110 degrees outside, it's probably about 130, 140 in the attic. Uh, and so you're just leaving these stored in heat the whole time and that's really bad for them. Also same thing with a cold outside, you don't want to put these in your backpack, throw it up in the attic because it's winter time, you don't want to fly it in the winter time, maybe it's too cold, your fingers are too brittle, so you just don't want to get out and fly it in the in the winter time. Uh, don't store it in the attic or in the garage that doesn't have air con or a central heat and air or anything like that because uh, keeping these in the completely freezing cold can drastically change the lifespan of your battery as well. Also extreme heat can be inside of your car like uh, your cars get super hot on the inside, so don't put, don't store these with your quadcopter inside of your bag and leave them in a car and then, you know, go into a store for, you know, two or three hours and then expect to come back and have uh, perfectly good batteries. Sometimes you can ruin them only within a few hours. Most, most of the time it takes like a day or so for it to really do any permanent damage to your batteries, but there's there's been times and documented times or just leaving it in a car for a few hours uh, in the extreme heat can end up damaging your battery uh, and you'll have to replace it. So this is mainly for storage. And like I said before, these get stored a lot more than these do because people buy several of them since the, the flight times are cut so drastically. Uh, so number, time your charge, number your batteries, and make sure you're working your way through your batteries Drain your battery all the way down, and then recharge it. Don't drain your battery halfway and recharge, halfway and recharge, halfway and recharge. Make sure you're continuously using all of the charge, and then recharging it. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully this has been some help to you guys. Just a quick review, step-by-step, kind of how I do it. Thank you guys for watching. Please hit that subscribe button. We'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one.